What's up YouTube? Today's video is all about my recent music pickups for the last month or so. I'm going to start off with CDs, then I'll go over some 7-inch vinyl releases, and then finally the full-length vinyl releases. Uh, my voice is kind of shot today and I don't really know why, so I apologize if I don't sound very clear today, but uh, we'll move on. So the first CD I picked up is actually just a CD single, and that is for a band that I've been very into over the last couple months called Swerve Driver from the 90s and uh, still active today. Um, very cool artwork pretty much on all their releases. I really like this cover for some reason. There is actually a 12-inch uh, vinyl release of this as well, and it's quite expensive, but you can get this on CD pretty cheap. Uh, the main reason I wanted this is because it has uh, their classic song Duel on it, um, but you can get that on their, their great album Mezcal Head. Uh, it also has two uh, exclusive B-sides though, which is the reason I wanted to purchase this. So all three uh, very great songs and uh, definitely a cool cheap pickup so very good stuff. The other CD I picked up this month is another volume in the Hip Hop Essentials collection put together by Tommy Boy Records. Uh, this highlighted all early hip hop releases from 1979 to 1991 and as you can see this is volume 7. Uh, these are very cool compilations they're incredibly cheap to pick up now there were 12 of these released, and I have probably about 7 or 8 of them now. Um, the thing is, they have really good track listings. It's a nice mix of um, all genres of you know early hip-hop, from electro to gangsta to just about everything. Um, but the downside of these is they're edited, and I don't know why. It's kind of silly. If you're buying something like this, you're going to want the original versions of the tracks, but... They, uh, they cleaned up the, the language in them, and it's kind of a bummer. So that's the real knock on this collection. Um, obviously, some of the songs don't have language, so it's not a big deal. But uh, you can pick these up cheap, like I said. And if you want to get a full set of all 12 volumes, you could probably do it for, I don't know, 50 bucks or so. So um, overall, a nice way to collect a lot of early hip-hop in a, a very easy format. So pretty neat stuff. Uh, next I'll move on to some 7 inches I picked up this month and the bulk of these are from an order I did from um, a record store in Japan actually. Um, they have some fantastic prices and I really hate to give out their website address over YouTube but if you're interested I probably would tell you if you sent me a message. Um, they for some reason seem to not really pay too much attention to what eBay prices are for this stuff or even Discogs and even with adding shipping from Japan, the stuff is very cheap and they have a great selection. So um, the downside of using their website is, is it's fully in Japanese. You can translate it using Google Chrome. And um, I've had to do all my orders through email because they don't even have a way to ship internationally on their website. However, they have been very willing and friendly and uh, speak very clear English by email uh, to place international orders. So again, I'm, I'm giving an advertisement for a website I don't want to give out because I feel like... Uh, the prices are just going to shoot up if everyone discovers it in the U.S. But anyways, that being said, I've got some really cool stuff from them over the last couple of months. So the very first one of these is by a band named Drake Tungsten. And this is the 7-inch release Six Pence for the Sauces. Uh, the thing about this is it's not really a separate band. This is what Spoon was before Spoon really existed. It was kind of Britt Daniel of Spoon's original group. Um, I believe these are all solo recordings, actually. And what's really cool about this 7-inch, it's been out of print since the 90s, it's very desirable, um, is it has five songs on it. And if you look at this, uh, two of these ended up becoming Spoon songs in the future. So Chicago at Night is one of the probably best-known songs off their album Girls Can Tell. And uh, I Could Be Underground was also featured on one of the Spoon releases. These are early, uh, rough demo versions. And I can tell you the version of Chicago at Night on this is awesome. Um, I've wanted this for a long time. The only things that Drake Tungsten put out were this 7-inch as well as a uh, cassette release that had some different songs on it. But uh, that's it. And um, it's never been re-released, which really blows my mind considering how big Spoon is. So very cool to get an original copy of this. Uh, the next 7-inch I got is the first of several Guided by Voices uh, releases that I picked up this month from that Japanese mail order. And these are all getting pretty tough to find in the U.S., so I was very happy to find multiple of these all in one order. It made it very simple for me. Uh, this is their single for Dayton, Ohio, 19-something and 5, which 
probably not one of their best known singles, but um, this one's, it's a good song, actually. It was recorded live. Uh, there is no studio version of that song. And then it has three uh, additional songs on it that are essentially Robert Pollard solo uh, songs. So not one of their best seven inches, but still pretty cool to pick up. The next one is... Uh, Probably one of their better acclaimed 7-inch releases, and this is very hard to find. This one is called Fast Japanese Spin Cycle. And uh, most Guided by Voices fans would probably know this one for the song My Impression Now. That was most likely the, uh, the biggest live song on this that they played frequently. However, there's some other really cool songs on this. Uh, Volcano Divers I can highly recommend. And uh, it also has a completely different version of Marchers and Orange on it than the one that was on their album Vampire on Titus. So, very happy to find this. I've been looking for this 7-inch for a really, really long time. Uh, this one's been out of print since 1993 or so, I think, when it was originally released, and uh, not an easy one to pick up. Uh, the next one is another Guided by Voices 7-inch. This is for their song I Am a Tree. Uh, this is probably one of their best-known songs. However, it was not written by Robert Pollard. It was written by Doug Gillard, their uh, guitarist of that era. and Definitely a fantastic song. Um, I was actually really excited to hear this on vinyl because the album that this one comes from I don't have yet on vinyl, and that is Mag Earwig, which also has not been re-released. Um, this, for some reason, just leapt out of the speakers when I was listening to it. It's really a great mix. And uh, the two B-sides on this one are great, too. Uh, they're both very proggy, which was kind of the, I don't know, the thing that was going on during that era. So... Definitely a cool 7-inch here. This is not one of the more expensive Guided by Voices 7 inches, but definitely one that's worth picking up. And uh, finally, for Guided by Voices stuff, I have one more 7-inch. This is, to my knowledge, their only picture disc that they ever released. Uh, this is for the also very well-known song, Cutout Witch. And this one has um, Cutout Witch, as well as Ryan Jive Click off their album Under the Bushes, Under the Stars. But it also features two bonus songs that were recorded live, and I don't think they uh, existed on any other format. So this is another very cool 7-inch. Um, again, not a super expensive, super hard to find one, but uh, definitely a cool one to add to your GBV collection just due to the, the cool picture disc. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, the next 7-inch is not by Guided by Voices. Uh, this is by another band I have shouted out before that I really enjoy called Love is Laughter. And they've been mostly inactive over the last few years. Um, they are currently uh, centered out of Brooklyn, and I believe they've had quite a few lineup changes. However, the, uh, the main creative genius of the band has not changed, and that is Sam Jane. Uh, this is for their 7-inch uh, for the song Timers. And this was released a couple years ago, but it was kind of like an internet-only release, and I didn't even know about it until recently. Um, that song, Timers, is fantastic. I highly recommend you guys check that song out here on YouTube. Maybe I can provide a link to it below. And um, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, this is also a very cool vinyl release because it is on a kind of uh, pink clear vinyl, I guess you could call it. I don't know. It's definitely a unique color, so pretty cool stuff. Um, I got this directly from Sam Jane, actually. Uh, you can place a mail order um, through his Facebook or website, I believe, to get this online. And um, they just released a new 7-inch, which I just found out about uh, for this year. So I'm going to have to pick that up, too, I'm sure. The, uh, the next 7-inch I got is another Record Store Day release for this year. Um, this did not make my Record Store Day list of stuff I wanted to pick up because I didn't know what was on it. Um, this is part of the side-by-side -side mystery series where you get an uh, original song and then another band covering that song. Um, in somewhere in Warner Brothers catalog, but this one they put out one of these mystery ones every year You don't know who's on it. There's no artwork nothing and uh, I found out after the fact that it's a uh, who's Du do um, Features on this so the original song on this is by the Ramones It's Sheena is a punk rocker and then it's uh, who's Du do covering that song live um, kind of toward the end of their career uh, I am a Pretty big Ramones fan, but I'm a huge Husker Du fan, and essentially I just had to have it because they were on it. Um, I do believe it's the same recording, though, that's on their live album, so it's not exactly something that's unique. But um, it's a good tune. I mean, they did a pretty good job with it. So kind of a interesting release for Record Store Day. I just didn't know what it was when I was shopping Record Store Day stuff. But now that the cat's out of the bag, um, yeah, if you're a Ramones or Husker Du fan, pick this one up. Um, the way you can tell these side-by-side -side releases apart, since like I said, they do one every year, is they have slightly different artwork on them. So this one has the uh, two surfboards would be the way to find this one. So that's about it though. Uh, otherwise it's completely blank. There's no uh, credits or anything on the artwork. 
All right, so let's move on to some full-length releases. Uh, this is a classic album by the band Coach Whips, and it's called Bangers vs. Fuckers. Um, I have loved this album for a long time. I've owned it on CD. I never could get a vinyl copy. And um, as it says on the sticker here, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's awfully reflective. You probably can't see that at all, so I'll read it to you. Uh, it says, The pinnacle of their powers, 20 minutes of sheer terror, painstakingly remastered, and we fixed the art too. Includes a download code. Uh, yeah, pretty much just what it says. This is a 20 minute long album. It's uh, recorded at 45 RPM, so it's extremely loud mastering. Um, this will pull the paint off your walls if you're not careful with the volume settings. It's a fantastic record. Um, most people would know Coach Whips by what they became uh, once this band broke up, and that was the leader, John Dwyer. Uh, he went on to form the OCs, which became much more popular and uh, are still around today. But Coach Whips did a sort of reunion, I think, last year and played a few sets, so maybe there's a chance we'll get some new Coach Whips material, but this is easily their best album of their four or five albums they have, and uh, I highly recommend this one. I didn't even show off the back artwork because it's yeah, pretty cool, too. And uh, this is on white vinyl, too, so it's a pretty neat release. So, like I said, uh, definitely a, a reissue that is welcomed, and I'm happy to add this to my collection. It's, uh, it's good stuff. All right, uh, next one I got was just a Goodwill find, actually, and it's nothing that special, but that is the debut album by The Cars, and I've loved this album for a long, long time. I just never had it on vinyl, so um, nothing rare or super special by that by any means, but um, of that kind of late 70s glut of vinyl that you can find anywhere, this one's one that's worth digging out of those stacks and picking up cheap. It's a good record. Uh, another one I got at the same uh, location is the classic Black Sabbath album, Master of Reality. Um, this is my first Sabbath release. I've never really uh, chased them down too much. It's probably not completely in my wheelhouse. However, I noticed the songs that are on this, uh, a lot of bands that I do like have covered stuff on this. And uh, one of the songs I didn't even realize was a cover until I got this is the song Into the Void. And uh, one of my favorite 90s groups, Caius, did a, a great cover of that and definitely were very influenced by this record. Um, after listening to this, I can say that I kind of get it. I mean, I really enjoy this album. I don't think that this is the same as many of the other ones they did during this period, but uh, this is definitely a good one and uh, really like this stuff. Um, this is the original pressing from 1971 or thereabouts because it has the embossed cover and the label on the uh, vinyl is a green label, so that's kind of how you can tell this one apart. Uh, originally, this would have came with a poster, but this one is unfortunately missing it. However, the vinyl itself is in excellent condition, so I was very happy to pick this one up. Uh, the next album I got is the new release from Michael Cronin, who I have loved his prior two albums. They are very easy to remember the titles because the first one was self-titled, the second one is called Two, and as you can see, the new one is called MC3, so yeah. Um, really like his stuff, but I haven't opened this one yet and checked it out. It's uh, This is the original pressing of this That's I had to pre-order. It's a clear vinyl release, apparently. Um, so I'll have to check this out. It's getting some really mixed reviews, which surprised me, because his last album like blew the critics' minds. But I was a fan of him even before then. I saw him live on his very first tour, and uh, definitely good stuff. Um, he's played in Ty Siegel's band as well, so I've seen him many times playing with Ty Siegel. And... Um, done some great stuff with him too so but definitely I like his solo stuff I think uh, I think it's really good and underrated I don't know why this album is getting a mixed bag review so I guess I'll listen to it before I praise it too much um, the other thing I'll say about this is since I did do a pre-order with it through Merge Records uh, they threw in a lot of freebies with it so I got um, just a poster of the album cover which I probably won't do anything with but just nice to have um, I got a Merge Records sticker a Michael Cronin button, and then finally just a sampler of some of their uh, artist releases for this year. So, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, like I said, Merge Records has always done done me well through their mail order, and this was definitely some nice freebies with this one. This next album is another classic hip hop album, and I've been looking for on vinyl for a long time. Uh, that is the DOC's album, No One Can Do It Better. And he is highly underrated. Um, I don't know why most more people don't know about this album. It is 
loosely related to NWA. Um, it was released on Easy es record label. Dr. Dre did all the production on this album, and it very much matches the style of NWA releases about that time. Uh, this came out in 1989, and uh, definitely has some cool samples on it, and it's very... Very innovative production. Dr. Dre did a great job with that. Um, DOC wasn't as hardcore as NWA. I mean, most of the songs on this are actually pretty clean. And um, the final track on the album, which is called um, The Grand Finale, of course, uh, features all the members of NWA and really can't be missed. It's a great song. Um, there were several videos made for this album as well, so I, I think there was some money put behind it. However, it's just it's very hard to find on vinyl these days, and it's unfortunately not ever been reissued. So, I don't know. I think uh, I think more people should check this album out. DOC's career was uh, cut short due to uh, a car accident, I believe he had, and uh, it, it damaged his vocal cords or something like that. He was not able to to rap again uh, in the late '90s or something like that. I don't know. I don't know the full story, but. Basically, that's the reason why the DOC does not have many releases after this one, but this is a great debut album, and uh, great all the way through. I checked it, I listened to it quite a bit this month, so pretty cool. Uh, the last couple releases I picked up were two of the newer albums by the band Sloan, and I have talked about Sloan in a prior video. Um, I'm basically just getting ready and getting caught up on some of their other stuff because I'm going to see them live here in a few weeks. So this is their album from a few years back called The Double Cross. And I picked these up new, um, very cheaply, actually. They were kind of on a sale with Yep Rock Records. So pretty cool stuff. Um, haven't opened this one yet, but I've checked out a few of the, the singles online with this, and I did like them. And then I also did pick up their newest album, which is called Commonwealth. And this is a really thick, heavy package for this one. It's a 180 gram vinyl, double album, and uh, very, very heavy packaging gatefold on this and that. Um, the, the gimmick with this album is uh, it's called Commonwealth, and um, there are four members of Sloan. They all pretty much play all of the instruments. They rotate instruments per song, and they're also singers, and they're also songwriters. So each of the four members of Sloan got to take a side of this uh, double album to um, create their own songs for that side. And it's kind of a mixed bag by having that approach. I mean, it's novel, I guess, at this point in their career to do something new. Um, however... You can kind of tell which sides are the better ones. You can easily pick out your favorite members of Sloan because some of the songs are just that much better than the ones on the other side. So um, it kind of concludes with the final side, which is a single track that is very long. And um, I don't know. Looking forward to hearing some of this live. I think this one's a pretty good album of theirs. Not one of their all-time best, but it's uh, it's decent. So that about wraps it up. Um, that's my music pickups over the last month or so. Uh, Record Store Day is out of the way. You can check out my video for that. I did last month. Uh, there was quite a bit of stuff I picked up just for Record Store Day itself. And um, please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.